Hello brothers and sisters, this is a continuation of the Songs of Solomon. <coughs> We're now in chapter 5. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink ye, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. When we see the reference to sister, we can be assured that it's her Adam speaking to her. We know this because first Abraham and Sarah shared a mother. Now do not misunderstand me. This does not mean that your Adam or Eve shares a birth mother. No, don't even let a fallen angel twist you with that rubbish. They share the mother, the Holy Spirit, wisdom, and they are brethren to one another. Okay, it doesn't matter if one, if, if he's in the Bible or not, which I'll get to soon. He's declaring he has gathered his myrrh and he has received the oil of gladness, her sap, her sweet aroma. She has aroused his love. Again, goes for milk, go, he goes for her milk and honey, etc. And he is speaking out to his fellow brothers in Christ for his choice woman wisdom feeds them all abundantly. Before you run off thinking I'm speaking blasphemy, let me show you one huge example. Revelation 22, 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Notice it says the Spirit and the Bride. Does it say the Son and the Bride or Christ and the Bride? No, it says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit and the Bride, the woman. And before you say, Oh, we are all the Bride. No, 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 no. Men are not Brides. Men are sons of God. And then the next sentence it shows us, let him take the water of life freely. Psalm 5.2 I sleep but my heart waketh. It is the choice voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. Will and wisdom hears him and figuratively, figuratively she's asleep. Poetically it just shows her in a way that she's fast asleep. He calls in the night, he's knocking on the door um and then he asks her to open for her but she's not yet but he is not yet perfected okay he's not yet perfected but he has been moved by her lure her pheromone he wants to open her he's talking about her womb he is asking for consummation the two witness consummation on earth as it is in heaven now i've written this in a very symbolic in a very symbolic way a very you know figurative way there are so many interpretations to how this will play out in each individual's walk um, it could simply be that, you know, um, he's asking for a relationship with her or he's saying, I really like you, can we date or whatever, or he's asking her, you know, um, there's something about you that's really special. Now, a guy can lie, a counterfeit can lie with that stuff, right? Not saying that they can't. There's no right set of words that he's going to say when he first reveals himself to you. But what you're going to do is you're going to reject him. Okay, because she says, I have put off my coat, how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, how shall I defile them? He's going to come in a package she doesn't expect. She, he's going to come in a package that she would think is not the right one for her. Right? But Paul and poor woman wisdom and many of the other daughters follow this pattern of behavior. They've become so engrossed in rights and wrongs in doctrine that although their spirits have been made clean, this invitation to consummate with a man they're not physically married to with a ceremony and without a ceremony and a cake and legal document, you know, they get surprised. I can't do that. It would be a sin if I was to do that, she cries. She's just she's conflicted. Plus there's also the element of surprise in that he may not be who she who she imagined him to be, and he may be a man who has previously known nothing about the things of God. Now, before you say, How can that be possible, Leanne? That's insane. How can why would God give me a man that's never read the Bible before? Well, look at Saul on the road to Damascus. Okay, one day he's killing the Christians, three days later he's, he's, he's beginning his walk of testimony because God just changed him just like that. And that's the promise because Paul was the, was the template for the, for the new Adam. Okay, the disciples were not. The disciples were afraid of Paul because Paul had Christ in him, the hope of glory. The disciples didn't have that. They were actually afraid of Paul. Now, if you don't believe me, look it up. Look it up. Okay? So, do not be surprised if your Adam turns up in front of you one day and he doesn't know, he doesn't know a damn word about the Bible. He doesn't know anything about it. All right?
there's other ways that this could play out. She may just think she's too good for him, okay? He might come from a bad background. He might have, you know, um, still be struggling with addiction, still be struggling. He could be struggling with anything. So he could, he could come with 10 kids to five different women and she thinks this can't be a man of God. You know, like it can be anything. But we have this and we all have it. And, you know, I keep telling you that I've walked this out, okay? I've walked this out. This is, for me, part of explaining this to you is in testimony to the fact that this is how it plays out, okay? This is how it plays out. I rejected mine, okay? Um, because he was not who I expected him to be. Now, she says, oh, dear. She says, I'm clean and pure and, oh, gosh, I can't let you in. You know, back to the marriage for a moment. You're already married. Let no man separate what God put together is about the spirit marriage of spirit before you were even born. So then son 5.4, my beloved put in, in his hand by the hole of the door and my bowels were moved for him. He attempts to lock, unlock her door, which is not perverse. We are not speaking of an assault against her flesh here. We are speaking of the lock that opens her heart, but she resists him. And then she ends up regretting it. Songs of Solomon 5.5, 5. I rose up to my beloved and my hands dropped with myrrh and my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the hands of the, of the lock because he unlocked it. He's already unlocked it. Just by him coming and saying that to her or coming near to her, he already unlocked her heart, but she hasn't opened the door of willingness. Now she's attempting to open the door of willingness, but let's get something straight. She might not even realize that he's the one who unlocked it. He's just some dude that she's rejected. She doesn't even know that it's him. So when she rises, she's rising to the to the feeling of what's happening in her heart with all this myrrh that we've talked about from the beginning of this study. She's rising to this myrrh that's coming out from her. So she's going to open. She then touches the handle of this lock that this man she can't identify has risen has has opened. And when she opens the lock, when sorry, he's unlocked it. And when she opens that door and starts to let that myrrh flow out, and she starts to have that love you know, fill her even more and more, she rises to the occasion too late. Her ha her hands, her efforts to un open the door um, after she's rejected this one, this Adam who's come and done it because he's come and moved her cellular structure. He's come and done something, but she didn't notice till it was too late, okay? She was moved in spirit by the myrrh that his physical presence had released. And she... Um, I've gone back up, I'm sorry, because I went off track from my notes. She opens the door to my beloved. So she opens the door to her heart, but my but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him, and I called him, but it gave me no answer. So now she can't find him. She knows that someone's opened her heart. She knows that it's been opened, and now she's trying to figure out who was it. Okay? And then, like I did, you start going back through every man that's ever come through your life and you go, which one was the one that did it? Which one opened the door? I don't know who opened the door, Lord. Who opened the door? So you start going back through your life and trying to figure out who opened this door. Aha. And this is where it gets really hard for her, okay? I opened the door. Oh, sorry. I read that. He gave me no answer. So when she opens the door to her heart after he had unlocked it, he withdraw he'd withdrawn already. He'd and he, he rejects her now, okay? He, she doesn't see him. She doesn't know who he is. But when he spake, even though it included a rejection, if that takes place in your, your personal scenario, it took place in mine. Um, so when he, so when she decides to open her heart after he's unlocked it, there's a time of which she's going to, after she goes, because she's going to go back through all these people. He's going to be the last one she looks at. Okay, I know this. It's testimony. It's the last one she ever thought was it was going to be. Okay, so she's moved to contact him or she's, she runs into him, however it plays out. But this time he rejects her because she's already rejected him. Okay, but when he spake, even though it included some type of rejection, um, and when you ask me why does he reject her, check out where Mary met Christ at the tomb and then she went up and told the disciples, and they call her crazy and then Christ appears and upbraids them. Yes, Christ told them off for their unbelief. So yes, it includes a rejection. 
it has to we are strengthened in rejection our faith is strengthened in rejection okay he is then made to retreat from her to finish her process of discovery so he rejects her um, and then she finishes that process of discovery because she has to she has to go through all the men that have ever come in her life whether it be 2 or 24 she has to go through it all she has to take it all off because every single one of those men that have come into her life have superimposed their will and forethought over the top of the father's will so she has to remove all this rubbish out of the rubbish bag before she can fully focus and see the real Adam for who he is so he's made to retreat so the all this rejection and stuff it's all part of it and it's all necessary her focus has not stopped spinning she is still seeing projected thought forms of the self-willed when it comes to males okay but although she's doing that she's she's already made ready in Christ Jesus she just hasn't so she's got that you know that connection to the spirit she's got that she's got that down pat but she's having trouble identifying that in manifested flesh she's having trouble figuring out how that how that works in in the physical world where how, where do you see it how what does it look like when it's manifested in the flesh you see what I'm saying the Lord had already made her ready in the spirit and made her body ready but when she looks out into this world that we call our physical reality she can't she's still trying to figure out that discernment when it comes to males and and male relation relationships with males five seven the watchmen that went about the city found me they smote me and they wounded me the keepers of the walls took away my veil from me now this is the hardest test for woman wisdom because it gets very difficult at this point she's now been exposed her heart's been unlocked the love and everything that has been locked within her has been released so guess what the dogs come sniffing okay the dogs come sniffing her out and this is it becomes difficult for all for women wisdom and all the other daughters of Zion at this point she has rejected her Adam and now has no idea what she is doing in the physical relationships with males she's become she becomes confused though her spirit in all other areas of her, her life is spot on the watchmen now the fallen ones are even more desperate to prevent her from finding her Adam right the dogs have come sniffing they're trying to they're trying to stop her from achieving her goal they do everything in their power to keep the Adam away from the Eve and everything in their power to encourage other males to injure her. Some took away the veil, as in they lured her into a sense of false security because her love at this point is so abundant and free-flowing, they've used it against her and she yearns for it. And they take advantage. Unfortunately, she's not innocent, she's not an in, she's not a completely innocent victim. And because she just really, really, really wants this manifested love, so she makes mistakes. Look, we all do. And anyone who's in there going, I wouldn't do that trust me when you go through this you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes son 5 8 I char charge ye O ye daughters of Jerusalem if you find my beloved that you tell him I am sick of love now again sick of love means she's sick with love as in she's agitated she's low you know she's yearning she's longing that type of thing but unlike the last time she called to Jerusalem's women in a, in, in, a jeal in jealousy for her husband, now she's calling them to help send him home. Because she now knows, because she now knows she's, she's met him at some point, that he is giving off his sap of frankincense and that women must be recognizing him. She is saying, keep an eye out and if you see him, tell him, tell him that I need him. So there's also something that's changed in her heart because she's not jealous saying, keep the women away from him. She's saying, I really hope that other women can see how special he is. You get what I mean? So there's there's layers that are being lifted off her heart. Her perceptions are changing. Her heart has become softer. She's not so, you know, rigid. Um, Songs 5.9. What is thy beloved more than another beloved, O thou fairest among women? What is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou dost so charge us? They respond to her. What is, oh, I'm sorry. They respond to her, what is so good about him? Why can't you just meet someone new, right? Apply this to how people talk these days. Why can't you just get over all your exes? Why can't you just get with another new person? Why does it, you know, why can't you move on with your life? You know, I've copped all of that, okay? There's a, you know, and there's there's more to this too. There, there's, our brain is a complex organism, okay? And trauma to the brain requires in order to undo 
emotional brain trauma you need to actually go back and look at where the trauma originated and in doing that you begin to heal okay the, I'll actually I'll put it in, an, in a quick analogy that I used with someone um, the other day sometimes you need to look back at your past to heal and forgive and let go and in looking back looking back is like pulling the stone of a you know the stone back in the slingshot and when you go back and you look at the past and you heal it and then you let the you let it go that releases the stone and the stone catapults you forward okay so we have a lot we have a world and a society that says can't you just get over it can't you just move on we're not supposed to we're supposed to go back and heal our crap and in healing our crap we're catapulted forward and all of those superimpositions that should never have been there all get pulled off our brain and our brain starts to see things more clearly and in doing that we end up finding our atom but I promise you your atom is some is is <clears throat> there is a possibility that your atom is in your past that doesn't apply to everybody okay there's not one rule fits, fits all but what can be said is there will be a time frame in which when you begin to go through this process if you are a female there will be a time frame where your atom will appear and there will be a moment when you will reject him because you won't realize that it's him <coughs> to no fault of your own you know except to say that you have to walk it out okay but I've just given you a really big key the big key to this is even though you may not have ever met your Adam you may not have met him yet he might be someone you haven't met you still have a box of bullshit from all your past relationships whether it be when you were 8 15 24 okay you still need to go back and look at those relationships and undo whatever damage was done whether it be prayer or whether it be just looking at the dynamics from your from your more mature perspective and if what when when you do that and you forgive and you let go it's going to help you be able to catapult forward so you can identify the one okay song 510 my beloved is white and ruddy the chiefest upon upon sorry the chiefest among 10,000 now he is white remember in the first chapter he was black now and I said it's carbon now he's white he's full of salt by carb salt red is ruddy washed in the blood the chiefest among 10,000 check out your Bible there is the first fruits of 10,000 men and women he is the captain of the 144,000 and the chiefest of the 10,000 and he's the male of the two witnesses the first 10,000 are followed by the rest of the 144,000 company <coughs> I told you the Bible is quantum physics it's not all straight and linear the way people believe that it is so um song 511 his head is as the most fine gold his locks are bushy and black as a raven his head is priced black is not black it means dusky hue like you know like dreamy yet ominous when you know because if you look at the raven it's ominous and it's a dusky hue so dusky is like ominous and dreamy okay this is really poetic language if you've ever studied a, if you've ever done a poetry class this is not difficult for you um songs 512 his eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of water washed with milk and fitly set okay we know the milk right we get that doves eyes again that's the eyes of christ the rest is self-explanatory in regards to what i have already shared psalm 513 his eyes are as a bed of spices as sweet as flowers his lips slip his lips like lilies dropping sweet smelling myrrh it's a tongue twister now it is poetically referring to his bridle upon his cheeks but not like the bridle of jewels that the woman has because she she actually has a bridle with a bit right like a mare like a horse bridle but his bridle is more his mouth is a bed of spices he speaks to her heart he speaks the truth and then in the next verse his hands are as gold rings set with beryl his belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires this is where the father directs the male not with the with the reins as the bridle as the bride has but with the hands okay he's controlling the hands that's why there's gold rings set with beryl why are they the hands because these are the hands that will hold the reins of the female 
he will reign over her heart as a son of God, as a Christed male. And his belly of ivory, which is purity, overlaid with sapphires, the sapphires of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 5.15 His legs are as pillars of marble, set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. Now we've gone over that Lebanon, Lebanon was where you got the really good wood. Um, cedar wood, cedar trees, we did this already. It stands for the stripped back rods and the, um, you know, the pillars of righteousness. But his legs are like marble. They're heavy and they're strong. They're walking in the Lord, yet they're unmovable to anything else. And they're set upon sockets of fine gold. They are, they, their legs and their movements are set in Christ's power. And then Psalm 5.16. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. My beloved is my friend. I have met him. Okay? She has met him. So by the time she gets to this point in her journey, she has met him. It doesn't mean that before she's started this journey, she's met him in her life. It just means that by the time she gets to this point, she's met him. He's come before her, but she hasn't recognized it. But he did unlock her heart. So now she's saying, my beloved is my friend. I have met him. But she has no idea at this point that she's actually met this person already. And I should have mentioned earlier when he knocked on her door and she rejected, she didn't understand it was her Adam. She was still figuring it out, but it was her own mind that was confusing her. Anyway, it's 11.44 p.m. I am done for the day. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters.